of individuals. Welcome to the MSME Radio Network. The broadcast shows are for informational and entertainment purposes only. They are not designed to provide listeners with specific personal, medical, or counseling advice. Individuals with a medical issue should always consult their health care provider. MSME is not responsible for content of individual shows. The views expressed by show hosts or their guests are their own. Enjoy the show. Hi, thanks for tuning in. This is Rebecca Naylor, health coach with Chronically Well Club. I'm very excited that you're joining us today. I've got an exciting show for you today, interviewing uh, Mike Wallace and Corey McLaughlin of 10Fed, who are going to share some awesome wisdom with us about life purpose and creating employment that's going to help you to have optimal physical and emotional health. So for those of you who might be tuning into the show for the first time, I do have multiple sclerosis myself. I've been living with it in remission now for 20 years, using functional and lifestyle medicine to heal myself on my own. So I create this show to share with you the nine keys of healing that I think are really important for you to pay attention to if you're going to heal on your own. And we're actually going to be looking at five of these just as we talk to these gentlemen today. So we need to pay attention to our diet and our toxins, our movement, our cognition, what we put into our gut. And as we're going to be talking about today, it's really important that we pay attention to our emotions, how we engage with our community, the environment that we surround ourselves with, and also our own mindset and belief. So we'll be touching on some of those topics today. So let me jump right in by interview, uh, introducing you excuse me, to our guests. So Mike Wallace, say hi Mike. Hello. Mike grew up in Pembroke, Ontario. He moved to Toronto in 1999 where he graduated from Seneca College in 2003. He started working in the corporate world right after that. Uh, for 10 or more years, he was managing projects in the financial and healthcare industries. However, he decided to leave the corporate world behind in 2014 to find a greater purpose and to truly make a difference in the world. So welcome to the show, Mike. Thank you. And Mike's friend and partner, Corey McLaughlin. Say hi, Corey. Hello. Corey grew up in Kincardine, Ontario, also moved to Toronto in 2002, also graduated from Seneca College in 2006. So he worked for a brief period in the cor corporate world and then started his own landscaping company in 2008. He decided to sell off his landscaping company in 2014 with the vision again of building another company that made a massive impact on the world. So together, Mike and Corey launched 10Fed on August the 10th, 2015. And they describe it as one of the most fulfilling days of both of their lives. And I'm sure it's just the beginning. Mm -hmm. So welcome to the show, guys. Thank Why you. don't you start by telling us what 10Fed is? Uh, good question. So 10Fed is a brand that we started uh, like, uh, I guess, 2015, August 10th. And every item that we sell, we provide 10 meals for hungry kids around the world. We sell t-shirts, hoodies, hats, toques. Uh, apparel for for any age going from from kids toddlers all the way up to you name it yeah so yeah we've been doing that for a little while just starting to get the the everything going at this point great and so you mentioned that you're feeding hungry kids with this so where are these hungry kids and how do they get the food so we partner with an organization called kids against hunger canada they're a small charity based out of peterborough and one third of the food they send out actually stays within Canada. Uh, a lot goes up to the reserves up in the northern part of the country, a lot of it to homeless shelters, food banks uh, in and around uh, Ontario, Quebec, uh, even on the west coast. Uh, and then the other two thirds get shipped to developing countries to where it's needed the most. So they focus on areas that have been stricken by disaster. A lot of the uh, uh, islands that just got hit by the hurricanes, a lot of the food goes there, uh, a lot goes to Haiti typically, a lot to the Philippines. Since they started back in 99, they've shipped to over 60 different countries and That's helped amazing. out. So yeah, wow. a great organization. So I met Corey and Mike about a month ago uh, at an event where I was speaking. It was a fundraiser for their initiative. And I was really, really impressed with when they spoke to the audience, how they described the change in their life, their happiness, their health, what was going on for them when they made a decision to work for a greater purpose. And it really made me think about the fact that I just left my job on September 5th of this year as a high school teacher 
because after 15 years in the classroom, it was just absolutely depleting me. And I think for a person who isn't battling a chronic illness, it's difficult for someone like me. It was really borderline catastrophic. So I can't even describe personally for me the difference it's made in my life to now be doing what I love, working full time as a health coach, teaching people about essential oils, sharing amazing neurotechnology, just really making huge difference in people's lives every day. So it must feel incredible for you guys to know that your purpose now is helping. How does that feel? It, it does feel really good. It feels yeah. amazing. Yeah. I, I mean, early on, it's trying to find that purpose, trying to find something to fulfill yourself. And if you don't have that, it hurts. Mm -hmm. You might not realize it hurts, but deep down, like in the subconscious even, it, it's painful. I, it I really, really like it that, really yeah. Because it starts in the, in the mental, but right. of course the mental quickly becomes the physical. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that I talk about a lot is the connection between our emotions, our outlook, our mindset, our thoughts and what's actually manifesting in our bodies. Absolutely. So, so why don't we start, start with the before. So tell us a little bit about what life was like before TenFed, when you were in the corporate world, when you were doing things that were not necessarily filling your soul the way it is now. Yeah, so I, uh, when I graduated school, I got a job right away uh, in a small, uh, a small telecommunications company, actually. I worked there for uh, over three years, and uh, I reached the point where I had to explore and go find myself, so I went traveling. I traveled the world for a year. Um, on my own and then some with other people as well but uh it really I, it helped me discover that you know there's there's a lot more out there there's a lot more that we don't have exposure to here it really opens your eyes in terms of uh you know how other cultures how other societies live and uh so it, that truly was an eye-opener for me but when i came back from traveling um i found myself really getting back into a similar position so i worked for uh a, a company in the healthcare industry where I would uh, be a project manager managing uh, a number of different initiatives. Uh, I left that role because I wasn't happy there and I, and I got a job uh, at TD Bank uh, in, in a corporate position and I, I spent the majority of uh, 10 years there and uh, I would say for the first part it was it was tolerable. Yeah I mean what was it like for you physically emotionally how was your health? Um, it wasn't in a good spot and uh, I started to realize that uh, mainly because I, I'd had uh, you know being in a corporate position I had uh, we'd have to go in for a mid-year or end of year review and uh, I was typically always asked the question you know where do you see yourself in five years mm -hmm. from now and, uh, and you're like not here yeah <laughs> I'm not here so uh, and if I knew that I didn't have an answer to provide to my manager at that point and I really started asking myself that question personally and I didn't have an answer for that mm -hmm. within the position that I was in so I thought you know there's there's never it's never going to happen if I don't actually just take a stranglehold in this and actually oh, take a hold of the Thank and... you for saying that because I think there are so many people that wait in limbo hoping an opportunity is going to mm -hmm. prance into the living room, right? That's right, yeah. And it but just you really happen. do need to make, t you know, take the action yourself and make the decision. Absolutely, definitely. How, how about you, Corey? How are things before 10 Fed? Yeah, uh, so I worked corporate for a little while. I did CIBC, I did Bell Canada, but it was still that that it, you know you wake up at five in the morning and you you want to find some reason to go into work <laughs> and I could not find it I would go in but I would always question and I'm, I'm saying like at the age of 22 23 and I'm trying to figure out why I'm getting up and you know it's that 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 feeling when you turn the alarm clock off and you're like I don't want to go in and that's I knew I had that I was trying to figure out what I need to do to, to change this mm -hmm. and um could you identify what was missing? No, not at that point. I, I didn't know any better because I had been told the same thing that I need to go find a job and make sure I get good benefits. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know, Ugh. I didn't know any yeah. better. Yeah. As someone who used to teach careers in high school, that pains me because I know that so many people are taught that, you know, just yeah. get an education, get a job, get your paycheck, be thankful. And mm -hmm. somebody said to me, I wish I could remember who it was a couple of years ago. Are your benefits really benefiting you? Right. And I, and I kind of stopped and thought, thought about that because leaving teaching, you know, which is a decent salary and good benefits yeah. and good vacation time and all that kind of stuff. I thought, yeah, is this really benefiting me? Like, okay, what coverage do I have? A hundred percent drugs. Wait, I don't choose to take drugs. <laughs> so right. how, how yeah. is that benefiting right. me? Right. Exactly. 
Okay, okay. So you've talked a little bit about when you started to realize things needed to change. How did it actually come together? I mean, whose who idea was it in the beginning? Or was it was it sort of a collaborative? That thing? is that is a collaborative idea. Yeah. That basically, so I ended up starting a landscaping company. So I'll give you a little backstory on that is I did get very sick of this corporate thing and it, I read a, a Tony Robbins Awaken the Giant Within. That'll do it. <laughs> early, early in the book, there's a line that says, here in North America, we don't have to go into work today if we don't want to. So that sparked me to take my list of about a hundred ideas I'd written out over the course of a few years and pick one of them and go. Mm -hmm. So I did, I chose landscaping. I knew I could go buy a truck grab a lawnmower and go door to door and grab a bunch of customers, which I did. I did that for several years. And then I said, Mike, let's go come on board with me. Let's do this. Let's build this landscaping company. We talked about that for a couple years mm -hmm. and it was hard to drag him out of the, the corporate <laughs> world. He was making good money. Right. That's and interesting though, that you first made the transition from being an employee to yes. being self-employed, which yeah. I think is, it, which is a big step for a lot of people who are used to having the security of that, you know, bi-weekly paycheck that's exactly the same all the time, mm -hmm. you know? So in a way that was kind of a transition for you that it allowed was. you to see, I can do this on my own. Yes. But then when did you get to the point where you realized you wanted to contribute more than lawn care? Yeah. So <laughs> I'll, and I'll tell you, I actually, I traveled to Iceland and I was the, just this experience, Mike was saying it earlier, when you go and travel and you see other, you have other experiences, see other places, see other people, things, and something triggered that I can do more. I can be bigger, I can be better, and I can help people in a bigger way. And so I was sitting by myself next to this giant waterfall in Iceland. And I had this, I just let the thoughts go. And I had this moment where I said, I personally don't want to do this landscaping thing with Mike anymore. I want to do something bigger with Mike. And we had talked about helping people by selling t-shirts right. and giving back to charity. And, and so in that moment I said, I'm going home. I'm selling my landscaping company, which I did within two weeks. I went home, sold right. something I built up for seven years was gone in the matter of two weeks. I think that's how it has to happen though, because yes. it was the same with me for teaching. I hummed and hawed, honestly, since teacher's college. Yeah. <laughs> but there was always something in the back of my head that was like, mm, this isn't the best thing for my health. But when I knew, I knew. I was, I was just saying to the guys before we started the interview that when I made the decision that this had to be done, I literally, within an hour, sent an email to my principal and said, look, I'm not coming back, replace me. Yeah. And, I, and I think when you know, you know, and for any of our listeners who are resonating with any of this conversation, I mean, it has to be a personal decision and absolutely do what's best for you and your health. But really ask yourself that question is what I'm doing every day, the best thing for my health, the environment that I'm in, the people that yes. I'm interacting with. Right. Because I yeah. bet once you started 10 Fed, your social circle changed quite a lot. Big right? time. Yeah. A lot of that changed very quickly. And it's one of the things what you said, when you know, you know, it's just, everybody's always, I find trying to find the perfect moment where everything is going to align to lead them to the point where they say, you know what, I'm going to take this leap. Mm -hmm. Everything doesn't have to be perfect for you to make that leap. Right. You just have to make that leap and you're just going to know that there's going to be a lot of bumps and bruises along right. after you make that leap. But at some point your wings are going to come out and you're going to start to soar. Yeah. There's a, a lot of perfection in imperfection. That's right. So Absolutely. just let, let it roll regardless. And I was going to go back to it. If you genuinely, like you have to know, you have to go with your gut. You have to go with your intuition. If you genuinely are happy with what you're doing, great. Mm -hmm. But if you find any of that intuition to say, I feel like I should be doing something else, do it. Yeah. Do it. Figure mm -hmm. out a way and take that leap and then see what happens after that. Right. And sometimes it doesn't have to be as drastic as actually quitting your job. It can be sometimes adding experiences yes, to right. your life. Like before I was ready to actually leave teaching, I started to think about what was really missing. And one of the things I really missed was the arts because I'd always been a musician and an artist and I love dance and all of those things. 
So I joined an orchestra, mm -hmm. you know, and for several years before I left teaching, I sort of coped with the fact that I wasn't happy nine to five because in the evenings I would take ballet lessons and I would go and play my orchestra. It was your and relief. I, yeah. Your, your so I, yeah. And then I started to realize, okay, look at the difference in how I feel when I'm doing these things versus how I feel right. nine to five. And then sometimes that can help you realize, all right, yeah, it's time, time to yeah, make a change. Absolutely. Yes. And, and, our, and our bodies tell us as well. It's funny that when I was back uh, working at TD, I, I seemed to have all sorts of, you know, tweaks, pains, neck, chronic neck pain that I had going on. I, I mm. had a severe knee injury. It was just one thing after another. And that absolutely relates back to the emotional stresses yes. that we're going through. Uh, and they, it, that's your body telling you physically that, yeah, you know, something might not be congruent here. Yeah. Yeah. It's an interesting idea that the pain is not really a bad thing, right? Pain is your body's way of saying, Hey, there's something out of alignment. There's something you need to pay attention to. Right. And you're not paying attention to it. So here, I'm going <laughs> yeah, <exactly. And laughs> to grab your attention. Even on like that, that same thing being said on the emotional Emotional side if you feel emotional pain if you feel uh, you know devastated at something or you feel like you're uh, you're missing something that is painful and therefore that's the signal that's yeah. the signal okay you feel pain what are you going to do to change that exactly. pain? you have to take some sort of action to change it absolutely because we do have the ability to create our lives based on our decisions and our thoughts and mm -hmm. can we control whether or not we break our leg no you know, if, if it happens, it happens, but we can always control our reaction yes, to right. the circumstance and yeah. how am I going to deal with this and how am I going to exactly. move forward, right? Love it. So we've already started to talk about this a little bit, but what, what advice would you have for any of our listeners who are thinking, man, this is me, like, I hate my job, or maybe it's not even the job, maybe it's, maybe it's the friendships, maybe it's the social circle, maybe it's the environment that they're surrounded with. If somebody feels intuitively that there is a change that needs to happen in their life, mm -hmm. what advice would you give them? I, I would say a really good way to start is to write down a list of 10, 20, 50 things that make you tick. Mm. Write down a list of things that you want to do, you want to, uh, places you want to go, things you want to see, things you want to do in your life, and then aim to begin doing those quickly and start to build that list to the point where you're doing the things that you love doing. You'll, you'll notice your emotions, your body changing quickly. So other than the uh, actual change of your employment, have you found changes in the opportunities you now have to do the things that you love? Now Absolutely. that you're doing ten fat, uh, and just yeah, being a, an entrepreneur obviously leads to a lot more freedom in terms of scheduling. So, uh, yeah, we put in long hours. Yes, we work our butts off, but yeah, at the same time, it's nice to not not have to worry about when am I going to use that two weeks vacation this right. year, and uh, just kind of have the the opportunity to create mm -hmm. the freedom that we want to have. So it's interesting. I found that as well since I started working as a health coach instead of teaching. Like you said, Corey, I used to wake up and go, oh my God, how am I going to get through another day of a hundred teenagers, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's a tough but one. now I find I wake up and at first I thought it was a problem because I would wake up and I would reach for my computer or reach for my phone. I'm like, oh, this is what I want. Like I want more connection with nature and people and mm -hmm. this and that. But then I realized I was reaching for the computer and the phone because I was so excited. Right to just jump back into what I do, right? Because I wanted to see, you know, who commented on the radio show mm -hmm. or who had questions that I could help. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I was working with one of my uh, friends and colleagues planning another essential oils class and I, I had some ideas I wanted to run by her. So when I actually think about the number of hours per day that I spend in my mind, in my activity, actually thinking about what I do now, it's a lot more than the hours I spent in the classroom. Right. Yet at the same time, I feel like I'm hardly working. Right. Do you find that? Yeah, All absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We, we wish there was an extra couple hours in every day so we could do more. Yeah. And that when you talk about waking up and, and jumping to the computer or the phone, it's a, I think it's a good thing when you have to catch yourself and say, relax, like you're going to get stuff done. <laughs> I know you want to get everything done in a day, but yeah. just relax, enjoy, like enjoy the, the hour in the morning to like set yourself up for a, a successful day yeah, and then definitely. go crush your goals. But at least that excitement mm -hmm. is a good thing. That's interesting that you mentioned that a lot of people have very specific morning routines that they do to kind of focus themselves. Do you guys mm -hmm. have morning routines? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you have to have uh, somewhat of a schedule in place, I think, to stay on track with everything. Uh, that morning routine doesn't necessarily 
uh, always hold true 100% of the time. Of course, you're going to have situations. Tomorrow we have a market where we have to wake up at 5 in the morning. Is it hard to get a workout in? Absolutely. Uh, but at the same time, you're waking up at 5 in the morning to go, uh, you know, in, in, uh, interact with people who love to support your brand. And uh, also, uh, you know, this, the sales uh, doesn't hurt either. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's something that's a big part, I think, of both of our, both of our lives. And it's just that, that going back to uh, building those habits and uh, actually creating that lifestyle uh, that will lead you to where you want to get to really is the building those habits. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And then j just to tap in my, my uh, morning routine, it's very simple. Like for me, I wake up, I go to the gym first thing. I like to get that physicality going right away. It gets the adrenaline pumping and it kind of sets you up. When you accomplish something very quickly in the morning, you've set the standard of accomplishing during the rest of the day. Yeah, it's so. funny, as a person with MS, I remember back when I was 17, I was dealing with chronic fatigue and a social worker at the MS clinic said what I should do for fatigue was exercise. Yes. And I seriously wanted to punch her in the face. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she's probably listening, hi, Kathy Lee. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I did find once I started listening to her, I was like, oh, when you work out, you do actually get more energy because you literally are creating energy within your body yes. and then you sleep better the next day yeah. and it's this, Awesome cycle, oh yeah, right? it's Absolutely. absolutely great yeah. way to start so the day. Th that mixed with uh, meditation as mm -hmm. well. So it's like the workout for the mind. You yeah. know, just focusing and, and making sure that you're present in the moment and ready to begin your day. Right. All of that within a couple hours early in the morning, good to go, fresh. So let's touch on the mind. That's a good transition. I yes. know you had mentioned to me, Corey, um, that before you started 10, 10 Fed, you'd had some challenges with depression. Yeah. Uh, early on, like going back, uh, probably mid teens, it was just, if you know, everyone, everyone goes through their thing and it's all relative, but personally I went through my thing with my family. My, my father had some issues going on with himself and therefore I had to take on almost that authoritative, uh, you know, like father figure and, uh, it was difficult and, and I didn't know how to cope with it. And I kind of distanced myself from family a little bit and definitely went into some sort of depression. Didn't know it necessarily at the time, uh, but you go all the way through until uh, mid twenties and I had tapped into alcohol. I had tapped into drugs. I definitely, you know, just would kind of wipe everything out from the day by doing these things. And all of a sudden mid twenties, something clicked in and I said, I'm not feeling good. I'm not doing the right thing. Something clicked in and I said, I got to stop doing this. Mm -hmm. So, so have you found since you made decisions like starting 10 fed and really changing your life, have you found that your emotional stability is stronger? Absolutely. 100%. Because again, it was finding something that I actually really wanted to do and that I had a true passion for. And all of a sudden, all those other things be became bearable and I started to understand how to deal with them better by going through this uh, transition into doing something I love. That's great. It made a huge difference. Mike, how about you? How has your emotional outlook changed since you made the change? Uh, it's improved a uh, hundred times over. It's uh, one of the hardest decisions that I had to make, but also one of the most fulfilling. Um, a lot of people thought that I was crazy walking away from a, a high paying job uh, in a position where I was consistently moving up that corporate ladder, so to speak. Um, but I, I always kept asking myself and I would come home every day from work and uh, ask myself, how, what did I contribute today? What did I, what did I give back today? Mm -hmm. And uh, I ne never really had an answer to that. I would try to make a few people in the office laugh throughout the day. That was the only thing that I could really <laughs> think of that I did that, that really felt like contribution. And uh, yeah, now it's just, it's, uh, it's such a different uh, mindset to be in when what every day we wake up in the morning that we have, uh, we have very lofty goals in terms of how many people we can help. And mm -hmm. uh, it just changes you in terms of how you think about everything in life. Yeah, as you help goal. others, you help yourself. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's something when I was a teacher, I used to think a lot about the idea that you teach what you need to know. Right. And then since I've gone more directly into sort of helping full time as a health coach, yeah, I really do find that the more I help other people with their lives, the more my physical and emotional health improves. Definitely. 
Hey, can, can we stretch this show into like an hour? <laughs> <laughs> I Maybe can we'll talk do, about this stuff all We'll day. do a part two. We'll do a part two because we do have to actually wrap up in the next yeah. couple of minutes. And I want to make sure that uh, we have an opportunity to tell people how they can get in touch with you. So uh, TenFed website? TenFed.org or TenFed.com. Either one will lead you to the same place. And okay. And that's T-E-N-F-E-D? T-E-N-F-E-D.org. Okay. And our social media handle is TenFedProject. Ten Fed Project, awesome. Yeah, find us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, mm-hmm. and we're working on the other ones. Those three. Yeah. No, I'm excited to see what you guys are doing this summer because, of course, I met you in the winter, and I know that you do a lot of outdoor festivals and things like that in the summer to really connect with your community. And that was one of the things that really grabbed my interest right offhand is that when I left teaching, what I was really looking forward to was having the flexibility to be able to see daylight (laughs) and to interact with my community, right? So I think that's probably really contributing to your health as well, is that you're outside in the sunshine, meeting people, the interaction, the creation. It's uh, one of the best parts of what we do. Amazing. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me on the show today. Uh, It's been really a pleasure to talk to both of you. So yeah, you get what you give, folks. So start to do some reflection. Maybe do that uh, 50 ideas list. What are the things that make you tick? What are the things that you want to contribute to the world? Do you have the opportunity to do that right now? And how can you get that into your life right now? So if you have any questions or you want to dialogue, uh, please reach out to me as well. So my email address is rebecca at chroniclywell.club. And please check out my main website as well www.chroniclywell.club and from there you can find links to this radio show archives also my facebook instagram youtube channel all that kind of stuff and also putting it out there again i do work as a health coach and i primarily focus on people who are battling multiple sclerosis and other autoimmune illnesses so if you really are ready to work with a coach and step up and apply some of the principles that you've heard about in these shows i would love to hear from you um i do work with people all around the world so if you're not in toronto that's okay i've worked with people in other parts of canada and even globally so i would love to connect with you and see how we can work together to help you discover your power to heal and recreate your health as these two fine gentlemen have told us that they have done today so for now everyone i hope you create an amazing day for yourselves and say goodbye guys bye guys thanks for being <laughs> Rebecca, Rebecca, thank, thank you, you so much for this really appreciate it you're very it's welcome pleasure. it's been a blast All right. Talk to you later, everyone. Be well.